So we've obviously got a problem here because when we refresh, uh, we get this functionality. You can see that it's scrolling down the page now. Uh, we've essentially achieved the effect, uh, but we've set the uh, CSS top value to the absolute position that we've scrolled down, and therefore it's a pres uh, the where it's present is at the top. Uh, obviously, this is connecting to here. So at the start, we have this set to 10 pixels from the top. However, when we start to scroll, we snap that to the absolutely scrolled position. So we want to go ahead and plus 10. Now we're going to be modifying this slightly later on uh, to make it more efficient. Like I said, if we were to go ahead and change top to, let's say, 20, uh, and we had this start at uh, 20 pixels from the top, when we then scroll, it will change position. We don't want it to change position. Uh, we want it to stay in exactly the same place. So uh, let's change that back to 10. Uh, we've got this added to 10, so now we have the effect that we're looking for. Uh, it will scroll uh, with 10 pixels from the top. Okay, so now that we've done this, we want to uh, go ahead and actually modify this so it will take the uh, value that this scroll is already at, or this div is already at, and then apply it added onto here. So just uh, above here, we want to go ahead and uh, actually retrieve this value. So I'm going to create a variable called current top, and that's going to equal um, the follow div. So we're again selecting the follow div, and we're saying dot CSS, and we're only supplying one parameter. And what this will do is it will ret return the value that we have placed here. Now the only problem is it will return the whole value including px, so we need to pass this uh, value to an integer and that will just take away the uh, px part of it. So we say pass int and we wrap that uh, in that this pass int function. So now we have the current top position, we can go ahead and uh, substitute that in there, so current top. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see it works uh, as normal as we have already uh, seen. However, let's go ahead and uh, change the uh, left and the top set, uh, values to 50 by 50, for example, 50. Now when we refresh, you can see it starts at a different position. However, it always stays in the same position. Whereas if we didn't have over here current top and we just had plus 10, we would have to go and change this value every time we updated this top value here. So let's go ahead and check out how that doesn't work you can see it snaps back to the top at 10 pixels we would have to go and change this to 50 in order to keep up with uh, the you know the value that we've defined in style.css uh, so we keep this at current top just to make our code a bit more efficient so if we were to go ahead and modify style.css uh, it would keep up with this value and that's a good note to think about when you you know for example if you included this as part of a template uh, and this was part of the functionality of a template uh, you would wouldn't expect to allow your user to go and have to change this and then have to go and change your code as well so it's always best to keep uh, the current values in there so obviously we um, we keep this dynamic uh, and running through uh, you know whatever we change in style.css so that's the end of the tutorial. We've created a div that follows down the page. Uh, quite simply with this code, uh, it's an extremely simple way of obviously creating it. Um, I have actually forgotten one thing, which is clicking this to get rid of it. So uh, at the moment, we can't click it to get rid of it. When we click on it, nothing happens. So what we can do is after the fade in, we can append on an event handler, and that is dot .click. So once we've appended on this event handler, we can then create a function inside of this and pull that down to actually hide this div. So we say this dot fade out, fade out, and we say 1000. Now um, that will uh, actually, you know, when we click on the follow div, we will fade out the div that we've uh, obviously clicked. So we click that and it fades back out again. Uh, now, this is more of like a sort of a pernickety thing, but you might want to go ahead and say var speed equals 1000 uh, and then go ahead and substitute this in here. Uh, and again, uh, this will allow your user to change speeds if they do want to modify this script. Uh, and obviously, you could again probably pass this, you know, with a function if you wanted. Uh, but for now, that's the uh, a little scrolling div in jQuery uh, and how it can follow you down the page and you can hide it by clicking on it.